Testing one, two. How you doing, James? Just joking. We're here at the Columbus Zoo with Jack Hanna. Jack Hanna, this is a facility that you've uh, certainly helped build. Tell us a little bit about this place, the history of this place, and why you've done it. Well, the history of the Columbus Zoo is, is uh, not simple. It's obviously a long history, 75-year history. But in 1978, the federal government was getting ready to close the zoo. They had 60 days. And they, I just was looking for any... I was a zoo director of a small zoo in Florida, but my daughter had cancer, had leukemia, Julie. And so they had to go to, they chose four or five hospitals in this country that she could go to after she left St. Jude's. And it just so happens that Children's Hospital in Columbus was one of them. And it just so happens they were looking for a zoo director. And that's amazing. And my friend in New Jersey read it in the New York Times that the Columbus was looking for a zoo director. So you talk about fate. And I ended up here in 1978. Uh, it wasn't Jack Hannett that saved the zoo. It was me putting a bunch of people together to saying, hey, look, you know, you have a, a zoological park here on a beautiful area, on a body of water in a beautiful part of Columbus. And if you don't do something in 60 days, it's going to go down the tubes. And so the city of Columbus, by the way, the zoo is under the sewers and drains department. <laughs> so that tells you one thing, doesn't it? Uh, and back then, a lot of zoos were having problems in this country. And so Mel Dodge, director of Parks and Recreation, gave the zoo a million dollars. That was really the first major turnaround. At that point, then what I did was I just go out and talk to everybody. I'd talk to three people or 3,000 people about the zoo. I'd take little videos. I'd take little slides. I'd take anything I could, and I'd go out and do all that. I'd do a little cable TV shows that had, might have two viewers or 2,000 viewers. It didn't make any difference to me. And I'd just talk about the zoo, how great it was. Even though it might not be as great as I said it was, I knew it could be that great. And so I kept working and working and working. And then uh, in 1978, 1985, we built the zoo up real well. Our attendance had grown from 280,000 to almost 600,000 in that four years. We took our gorilla collection, which I think you saw today, our famous gorilla collection, that had been in those old cages you saw there. That's all they had. And I built an outdoor gorilla habitat, which by the way is not here anymore. I put the gorillas outside. 200,000 people came that summer to see that, to see the gorillas. Had never touched grass in 30 years. And they all came up here to look at that. And then at that point, that was a turnaround. Then in 1985, I went to the voters with a property tax. You know what that is, a property tax. For about $10 a homeowner. And we went to the levee, and we, I held a little baby gorilla and did this ad. And the little gorilla at the end of the 30 second spot saying vote for issue two, let's say is what it was. And at the end of the ad, the gorilla turned around and kissed me, the baby gorilla. That sold it, passed by 78% a $10 million property tax levy. That was 85. 1990, we passed one for another five years for uh, uh, 28 million. In 1995, we passed one for 80 million. In the year 2005, I'm sorry, the year 2000, it was 2005, 2005, yeah, 2005, two years ago, we passed the largest property tax for a zoo in the history of America, $198 million for the zoo by 70%. Now you don't, <laughs> What it to me is amazing. It shows you what the people of Central Ohio love their zoo. And yes, I'm sorry there's a lot of school levies failed. I wasn't proud of that. Some people say you proud. I'm not proud of that at all. Uh, but what we, what we do have here at least is an educational institution up here at the zoo, not just a place for animals. Some people think that the zoo is a place for just animals. That's wrong. This zoo is just more than education than animals. Unless you teach people about our animal world, you don't need to have the animals. See, people have it a little bit backwards. They think that zoological parks are only for us to breed these animals and put them back out in the wild. That's garbage because there's very little wild left. What, the, what it's here for is to breed these animals so we can have breeding loans to other zoos throughout the world and then maybe 25 years from now when we get some of these lands under control in some of the third world countries and even our own country, then we can maybe set some back out in the wild. But the whole key to it is, is education and research is what we're doing here. I'm not talking about research of, you know, like research. I'm talking about research of learning about the animals themselves. And that's the number one purpose of a zoo. And, and right now, uh, the voters see that. And another main reason is to have fun. Some zoos think it's just, they're there just and the animals are hands off. That's not how we operate in Columbus. Uh, and I think the voters have spoken to that. Uh, this zoo is very much a, a, a people's zoo, where you come here with your family, you have a great time. And when you leave here, you say, man, I didn't know the giraffe had the same number of vertebrae we did. Uh, I didn't know that the elephant had 30,000 muscles in his trunk. And so you see, you've been educated when you leave the zoo, and that's the key to a good zoo.